I stopped my, you know, I turned off everything and turned it, I turned every, you know, came back on. Holy we should call shit. this the troubleshooting episode. Yes. Like the first that, one was monkey shit. This one's a uh, troubleshooting. That's why I started that's, recording. Man. So I, oh, you're recording your, already? How's your week been rocking? Mine? Mm-hmm. It's been uh, interesting, man, dodging, uh, dealing with the IRS and uh, all types of grown-up stuff I do not want to deal with. I just want to go back to bed and cover my head up. I'm like, I don't want to pay bills. I don't want to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Nah, it's pretty fucked up. Like, you know, me and uh, Shorty was having an argument yesterday about, like, how, like, I feel like if you're over 65, you shouldn't mm-hmm. have to pay taxes if you own your place. And actually also feel like you shouldn't have to pay taxes, period. You fucking survived. You made it to 65, and hopefully you put in at least 40 years within the workforce to where, like, you know, you've paid your debt. You know, because, yeah. like, a lot of, like, old people get kicked out of places because, yeah. like, all right, you got the house paid off, but you can't afford the taxes because you're not in your prime of, like, you know, your earning potential, right? Yep. And then she was like, well, that's why you're supposed to prepare and plan and put a But savings. even if you prepare and plan, bro, because my folks is old, man, now, God bless them, and mm-hmm. my poor pops, man, he's like, 76 um my mom shoot today's my mom's birthday happy birthday mom she's like going to yeah i gotta give her a shout uh yo but like they're all you know they're getting older and my pops just happened to work like he's got a housing business can't do anymore because of his heart so he's like yo i gotta figure out a job at home and he was head of the pension fund in dallas and like his stuff was straight but like as times goes on it doesn't matter because your investments you know depending yeah. on who's in office your investments get jacked and so mm-hmm. his stuff i'm like yo i remember he put in when i tell you work like working multiple jobs, you know, and doing all this stuff and, and still having to do it. It sucks, dude. And then Bro. taxes. And he's like, yo, I'm like, what the f-? Working past the age of 60 should be a choice, not a necessity. You know what I mean? It, it should be, but it, it also has to do with the population because of your population, Um, let's say the population, like I think it's Japan. I think it's Japan. that has like most of the people are old. Like they're worried mm-hmm. about it. Like the mm-hmm. most, that's a problem if, all the younger people under 65 most people are over 65 but they're not paying taxes <laughs> so you got like everybody else under 65 with let's just say like that's 30 percent of the population they're gonna have to pay like everything <laughs> so you, you know, guys hear me different. now we do yeah. all right let's just do this what's up let's what's go. going on so we just talk about the, the the plight of the common man the, the common you know, man the plight of the common man you know like you I know, know like, nothing of common men um, but you know, so we was talking about like how like you know people over sixty five they have to continue to like work in some scenarios because like all right, let's say you got the house paid for right, but your yeah. taxes is so od that you can't afford that right. So when you look at all these things that like you know get cut out of the you know the law book and shit like that and the book of rules, like that should be some shit. like people over sixty five should not have to pay for medical issues right because it's just gonna happen to you. You're like at the age of 65, you're like a 1970s car True. in 2020 something, right? True. This is going to happen. You're going to need some ish. And they overcharge you for this ish. Most of the hospitals are privatized. So it's a sliding scale of what they're charging for different right. services and shit. And the next thing you know, you, your grandparents or your parents drop dead of a heart attack because they stress the fuck out and can't afford anything. Yeah, man. Like, you know, when I was in the hospital twice, almost, you know, like well, a year or two ago, and I was all on death's door and stuff. Yo, I didn't have no insurance. Matter of fact, I just got laid off from my radio job. So like, it was it was perfect timing, man. So I'm still owing fighting with them folks, man. They want like, you know, way more money than I make. You know, like here's you want a couple hundred thousand for me for this or that. And I'm like, yo, like I was going to die. I had no point. You know, I was going to die. I had to pay this. You know what I'm saying? Was, and then so I'm still fighting with them back and forth. And it has to be they need to there needs to be some kind of something something needs to happen i don't agree with total socialism and healthcare at all but there has to be some kind of medium in between there where the government and private privatization works together you know what i'm saying because right now uh, like yo yeah, i'm looking not, at i'm like it's goofy and you know and it's crazy like you know for anybody who's ever hung out with all three of us like you know we're like we're so alike in a lot of ways and so different in other ways like you know it's like we've like we're like 100 percent on everything it's like our political views are so various like Key and Trav are anti-socialism. I am pro-socialism from the standpoint of like, what, yo, what? they chop so much money out of a motherfucking check, bro. The yo, way, but, like, I but feel wait. like, you know, it's going to be worse. If, it, it'll be worse. The percentage raise when you get socialism, like say, for instance, let's say, let's say you make, um, let's say make somebody makes 200,000 a year, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to really pocket maybe 50, maybe maybe and then everything else goes expensive because when you have government setting setting prices as opposed to uh where you have you know you have supply and demand 
Well, mm-hmm. if those things get jacked up, like for instance, perfect example, Soviet editor, Union. drop a truth bomb right here. <laughs> Problem is like, okay, let's take it. Let's say, let's say, look at the Soviet Union, right? Um, let's look at their right now what they're having in Ukraine. Now they're Russia, but they're still fighting with stuff from the Soviet Union. Okay, so mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff is falling apart that they're trying to fight the Ukraines with. You know why? Because you have people in the companies talking to the government, and they're like, "Yeah, man," because they're paying the workers the same. Don't matter right. if you're a doctor. Don't matter if you if you're a janitor at the at the at the weapons plant. You making the same. Everybody making the same. So there's no incentive. So why the hell am I gonna stay here and try to figure out all this stuff for love of country? No, I want to go home. I'm getting paid the same as a doctor anyway. So things start falling apart on the assembly line because no one gives a shit. And people start, corruption comes in because you're communist. You're not making so much money. The people at the top. You think capitalism is bad. People at the top by law have all the money. That's why if you look at like back in the days of the Soviets and even. North Korea, you look at them, they're all the people in charge riding around Mercedes and suits. The other people are starving because it's mm-hmm. communism, it's collectivism. The collectivism goes to the top. It just works like that. Looks great on paper. It's, it's almost Christian on paper. It looks really religious almost. It's a beautiful thing, but it doesn't work because they don't take into the the the, the idea of man. You know, we're going to cut like we might be good because we were raised House right. Was you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it. It just, you know what I'm saying? It sounds good and it looks good. And I see why people would want to implement it. Hell, even when I was young, I was reading, I was like, yo, this looks good. But then when you try to put in action, it doesn't work. Actually, it leads to slavery. Um, I forget what who it was during slavery times in America, but they um this is back then before communism was even used as a term very much. But one of the places it was first used in literature was explaining how um the plantation with slaves is the one of the best forms and 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 examples of, of communism because hey, everybody gets to eat, everybody gets a free place. Um, you get to you get to share supposedly share in the in in the food and stuff. And mm-hmm. there's a guy in charge. That's the guy. That's the slave man. It's it's a social. You know what I'm saying? It looks cool. No, it sounds so, but, cool. But even to go to like the tiniest screws, right? Okay, right. so like I definitely understand. Like you know, there's a the small percentage of people who have like majority of the wealth, and even those like you but know, it happens here too. I mean, don't situation. get me wrong. Oh yeah, don't strong. But the fact that the pharmaceutical companies and the fucking banks have mm-hmm. so much control over how everything goes down that's the that needs no, to be reset that, that's fine that, that can be because even if in the, even the way it's working you need capitalism but you need it you don't need pure capitalism just like you don't need pure socialism because that leads to corruption so you need you mm-hmm. need a blend of kind of of things you need things to kind of work with each other you do need regulations but you don't need regulations so bad to where like now we can't even get oil we were energy independent now mm-hmm. we happen to go to our enemies. Please give us oil, please. And they're like, <laughs> that's why OPEC's like, F you, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They're like, we're going to do it. You called me a murderer last year. Why the hell am I going to give you? Pr- I'm going to hurt your country because I can do it. And I'm richer than you. So what are we doing? Instead of being energy independent and to where we don't have to depend on anybody else, they decided to make cuts and things. Well, you can't drill for oil anymore. You can't do that here in the United States. Well, what happens? People end up paying five, six dollars a gallon, if not more for gas. And that leads to everything else goes up because mm-hmm. everything with plastic is made with oil. Strong everything. trickle effect. For yeah, real. Yeah. So it needs to be a combination right now. Right. Only problem right now, you got tribalism. You got teams, man. Like, yo, my team's the best Democrats. Yo, my team's the best. It's it's Republican. Nah, both of y'all some dumbasses. It needs to be a combination of both. You know? Yeah. Like a, a woven thing, because there's some practices that work. You know, right. amongst uh, you know, like I mean, because like I'm, I don't consider myself a Republican by any stretch of the imagination, right? But there's just some Things that they do that sense. is like it makes sense, and Everyone then I feel like, say, bro. no, Everyone I mean, I'm saying, say. and I feel like you know, like a lot of situations, Democrats ain't gully enough with certain. Ish. Y'all need to yep. be up like the Republicans are with certain things. You know what I mean? And then Travis is the biggest gun supplier in America. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. What guns? I lost them all in a boating accident. In the boating accident, you got a boat. <laughs> That's how you got the because you were selling guns. That's how you got the boat. No, right. I just had a boating accident. And they all went to the bottom of some, you know, ocean. Oh, got you. Uh, uh, don't don't have any, armed he doesn't have any shit. guns. He doesn't have any guns anymore. I'm no longer a gun owner. <laughs> what happened? I mean, okay. I lost them all. He lost them all. That's yeah, mine's in still in Atlanta. I need to get that back with one of them. I'm wrong. Yo, here's a funny thing. Do you realize, like, you know, like, so, like, I had a cop. <laughs> My wife was like, yo, I found another gun. Under the- <laughs> <laughs> like, and I forgot where the gun came from. And, shit. and I was like, yo, I think Lyric left it. You know what I'm saying? And then like it dawned on me like an hour or two later. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Kino left it because he didn't want to bring that shit to the airport. But do you realize like how what kind of turns your life has taken when you couldn't figure out where the f- 
fucking gun came from. That's what I'm like. Wait a minute. Like, <laughs> what do you mean another gun? Like how? Because I like I went and got one gun with you. How many you got? Like Matt, you, you armed up now? I got a couple. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's some strategic location. Hey, location. Be quiet. Stop telling people your business, especially in the. Uh, the oh no! Uh, no, the NRA is gonna. The NRA is gonna, you know? gonna love me. You know what yeah, I'm saying? We in Texas. We in Texas and Georgia. This is Texas and Georgia. Yeah, I know, right but now. you know he's not supposed to have pro gun point of views. No, oh, it's not yeah. that I don't no, no, here's the thing. Don't get it fed up. I am pro gun. <laughs> I'm pro gun, but in the house. You know what I mean? I like don't you. stop it. Don't go there, bro. Don't no, go I'm there, no, bro. but I that's how we I feel about start it. talking about if this. Everybody had chips on a fing gun, so we knew where your guns were at all times. The second a gun goes into a place to where, like, whoa, no one should have a gun over here in this kind of area, and then just jump out of the fing helicopters and shit like the damn um you talking smart uh, guns. Um, yeah, smart guns. We got smart yeah. phones. Why can't we have smart guns? They have smart guns. They're just not I want this to come out of the sky like Minority Report. Like anytime somebody <laughs> comes out, like, you know, gets near a school and shit with shit that's too aggressive to have in an area like that. Like you should be able no, to I defend your you. house and maybe defend your car. Maybe, but you. then but then drive bys go up, right? But see, like, yeah, yeah, but you saying, bro, they'd figure out a way to de- disable the chip. That's they'd the problem. Out. They have those, but they're, they 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 people they're worried about. They're trying to figure out a, a way to keep from being able to disable because, like, let's say you and I and trap with law abiding citizens and whatnot, and you know we we go to movies we or to whatever with our family. We don't have our guns. So, you know these these cats out here are smart now. These criminals they figured out how to get their gun into where we at, and man, we all just sitting ducks. Well, even especially if it's a psycho, if somebody's just robbing you, you're lucky you just get robbed. But I mean, you know, you your gun to- is locked. Yeah, and you yeah, can't shoot I mean, back. but the crazy thing about those narratives too. So let's just say, like, everybody walked in a place, and you know, everybody was holding. It's right. not like when shit pop off, motherfuckers put on team jerseys, and you know who's no. who in a, no, in, a, in, a in a fucking. Everywhere I go in true. Texas, Craig, everybody's holding. Every everybody, everybody, everybody has the gun. <laughs> the 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 mom driving the van has the gun. Everybody has the gun. But she ain't walking with the shit in her hand, like out. No, you don't want no because you don't walk with it in your hand. It's a it's a it's 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 not like I've seen it in Walmart. These cats with these cowboy hats, man. Yeah, with long rifles. You know, they'll have their long rifles or whatever. But no, I'm saying even the pistol dude had it because you know you can do open carry in Texas. Like I can literally I've I've done it before. I've gone, I forgot I had my in holster on I'm walking around. I wear mine everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. I go into Kroger, mine is right there on my side and for everybody to see. You should walk Same. in the Kroger with your gun because the prices are just way too high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, need a, we need a Publix here. Negotiation tactics. Like, uh, is this cheese really this much? We just yeah, we just got an H-E-B, though, bro. We just got an H-E-B. Yeah, first, we tried to go. I tried to go with my family, and it was like, yo, it was, it, was, it was like a concert. I was like, all right, I'm out. We didn't even, like, went to the parking lot and was like, yo, peace. These people went nuts up here. Like, I see those grocery stores sometimes where I'd be driving through certain states. Like, is it short right. for, like, Hebrew? Is it, like, all halal food? <laughs> Hebrew ain't even halal. That's that's Islam. Hebrew's not it's, halal. It's Hebrew's dude. kosher. Yeah, but it's all good. <laughs> I know what you're saying. <laughs> like, I don't know, it, man. I don't even know what it stands for. Is it? It's like all humanely killed Hey, you're going to start a war on the podcast, bro. Hey, man, I get people talking somehow, right? Hey, crack doesn't even know his <laughs> cultures. Insult their dietary needs. That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't even know what H-E-B stands for, but it's real popular in South Texas and just moved up here to North Texas. People are losing their ever-loving mind. Word. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I think it's just like the name of the dude who ran it. I think it's like his initials. <clears throat> I don't know for sure, though. But I also know we have H-E-B in Dallas. Like a, like a, It's like a neighborhood. It's like Hughes. Oh first yeah, yeah. Bedford. Bedford, yeah. It's confusing. Yeah. It's gonna get confusing. Like real at quick. first, I thought that was a grocery store serving that area until I saw it outside of the Hershey Lewis Bedford area. So I was like, "Oh, gotta be a Hebrew spot." It's from That's like San Antonio. It was a it, 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 it's like a San Antonio based supermarket. It's like from San Antonio. Gotcha. You know, <laughs> go get some lox and schmear. So your your point is, you can walk. You should walk into H E B with your pistol if you're armed. Damn right. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, like I mean, lots of people ain't taking their hat off and pulling a gun from under the little hats. The little, ha- you mean the yarmulkes? It's not the, a Jewish. No, 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 no. Like the, the big ones, like my man. Um, you know, like you know, they be having the curls and shit on the side. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, that's They're yeah. The Hebrews guns out from their yarmulkes. Like they they look like the dudes from um. From Looper, but like the yeah, future, yeah, yeah, the yeah. They dress like Amish dudes, but yet they're Jewish, but with yeah. like 
they got sideburns that curl. It's pretty interesting. And I like, I, and like, I like the where sense. they like punch people how they curls move a little bit, like on the side. Like, like it's, it's like their hair is their hair is measuring the amount of violence they're using. <laughs> Yeah, the, the velocity and force of the punch. Punches. Like, people be thinking of dudes, man, them dudes ain't choke at all, man. They got hands. Yeah, man, for real. But they be carrying diamonds. Did you know them cats? Well, you're from New York. You've seen them dudes. I've seen them when I'm up there visiting and walking around. Do you know most of them are carrying diamonds on them, man? They I believe armed. it. And if I had diamonds, I would know how to fight, too. You know what Hell I mean? Hell like, yeah. You got to be prepared. Mm -hmm. Them boys ain't playing around, man. They got that, oh, what's that, uh, Krav Maga? That's what them boys get. Oh, the Krav Maga, that. yep. Yep, yep, that yep, Jewish yep. Jeet Kune Do, man, getting it in. <laughs> That's what it is. Basically, it's the same. It's very close to Jeet Kune Do, but it's... I don't I think this so. podcast is gonna last long. <laughs> it means inter it means uh, Jewish intercepting fist. I don't. Know. <laughs> it's, it's what that means, man. But yo, yeah, I need. But, but I do need to remind me. I do need to get my pistol back from you because I'm carrying around this hood gun and it's really heavy. I'm walking oh, around nah, looking I'm, like a. I've already committed a murder. Comrade. You don't want this gun anymore. Oh, it's got bodies on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'd be, so the, you'd be seeing the. He's news. walking around with a high point. Yeah, I got a high point right now, man. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, dude. If I get into some mess, man, that thing's gonna jam on me quicker than what? You're I don't gonna know. You're gonna end up getting pistol whipped with your own gun. Yeah, I it's all it heavy. He's like, this gun has four stars. <laughs> GTA reference and. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, man, but yeah, it's, I need. Speaking I need a comrade, to we should invite him on this one. Um, on this one. Nah, because we're about to wrap this one up in the next 15 yeah. minutes. Like, uh, <laughs> we can't this, right now. This was the troubleshooting politics episode. We'll call this episode, because uh, like, I, I, I realized the patterns. Like, I thought we should name every episode like after a song in the catalog. Right. Oh, so like, so what would you call this one? Like, if you had to pull it out, like from like loaded a loaded guns and alcohol. Oh, so speaking of alcohol, what do you guys been drinking uh -huh. lately? Oh, man, I got so effed up at the fair yesterday. It wasn't even. And I went gluten free, so oh, that's why idea, we didn't do the episode yesterday. If you have any idea how hard it is to find gluten free beer, okay. So I had to drink cider, and I okay. drank so much cider that I made it home because Heather was driving. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and it was Texas OU weekend, so oh, like, oh, I was out there like Stan Marsh's dad, bro. There was so many. Yeah, it was just an uncomfortable environment. <laughs> a lot of Woo! Oh, yeah. you know, bro when i lived in these apartments i don't know if y'all remember why i used to live in these apartments that were like a hotel yeah you lived across the street from me yeah um, but yeah but on texas OU weekend you know i'd be getting in from the from from working from radio be kind of late i would purposely stay at somebody's crib because it was it was all young people where i stayed right and so you i would be walking down the hall and this is serious I, this happened about four it was i stayed about three or four years if I heard, ow, I'm leaving. <laughs> and I did. There's a few. And the, sure enough, there would be fights in the hallways and stuff. Dudes, I'd come outside my 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 door and it'd be dudes laid out. I'm like, yo, it just got, it got people sizing me up, man. It With fishing hats, it just was not fun. Kino's bro. apartment built up was like Roadhouse. It was. <laughs> Texas OU weekend. <laughs> yo, <laughs> this was scrapping, bro. I'm out there trying to be Patrick Swayze on them boys, man. It was, oh, it was man. Like, And the is like the flip side of it, Grambling Preview weekend, like no fist fights, just shootings, you just know? shootings, yeah, yeah. yeah they don't, that too. <laughs> your Grand Grambling Prairie View was the week before, and there was like three stabbings. And uh, it, one of one dude got stabbed with a broken bottle that was busted over his head, and then they stabbed him. Uh, and it was all over like it was some, it was a white party, not like white in skin tone, but like all white clothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the dude had red underwear on and you could see through it. So the one dude started talking to him about him being, how, why do you wear red underwear to an all white party? And that's how the fight started? That's how the fight started. That was over, Grambling Prairie. It was a fashion fight? It was over underpant. <laughs> over, it, was a, it was a panty, it was a panty fight. Damn, yeah, like, crazy. I mean, just imagine the reenactment. Like, yo, man, why your underwear red? Why are you looking at my underwear? And then like it just. Well, it was like older there. dudes, so you know they were like listening to Johnny Taylor and. <laughs> oh, you know, and that explains a lot because if you say if there was a stabbing, like you know, OGs, yeah. like dudes that have you know for his fifties, they like they'll pull out no, a they were blade older. and they hold they it to the, si to like the side, like it's low. It was like sixty three, bro. Sixty three. Yeah. And they was getting it in with knives, man. Have you noticed that though? Like, uh, there's been a lot of knife attacks lately. There's been way more <laughs> knives attacks than uh, this. You know, normally they've been mass shooting, but now they're getting into the knife game like in Europe. Well, you know what? The the maybe like you know the the it's a more intimate death. 
Exactly. You know, get more confident and comfortable because like we are so desensitized as a society that like, yo, you know, got more heart than they had before. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you know, pussy shoot. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like if you if you in a fight, you in a fight, it is what it is, use your hands. But yo, to walk up and stab somebody, man. And like people you, don't understand it takes a little bit of strength because the body is because, you know, we're compressed inside. Like it's it's literally like we're in a suction suit. Mm-hmm. And like if you stab somebody, the knife like will suck in like and you can't. It's hard to get out. People in the movies, it looks like uh-uh, it ain't like that in real life. You got to you got to really drive it in there and pull it out. So that takes uh, you got to be angry. You got to be angry. Serial Killer 101 brought to you by Keynote the Poetic. Well, I've taken Filipino knife fighting classes. So, uh, oh, word. Yeah, See, yeah, that's part, See? That's part and, of and once again, if you can take a Filipino knife fighting class, why can't you take Kundo? Well, you can grab a guy. Yeah. You know. remember when that dude chased us all through Deep Ellum? I mean, all through Austin with a knife. I mean, I still feel like you made him up in your head, but no, no bro. <laughs> I, I saw that one, bro. I he was, was trying witness to get to this your one. ass. No, he I was, was witness to you this. Were, you were his initiation. I thought you were supposed to be his initiation because he was like no. hanging out with you and drinking with you. He's like, I love you, bro. Like, I'll die for you tonight. You, you, remember, you remember telling us that? I remember that saying dying for the night. I remember that. I, t- that was a different night. Was yeah, it? man. That was was it? Night. You and night shit is like me with the gun shit. Like, like, but no, that was what... But yo, crack, I, I saw what he was talking because he was like, you know, we weren't listening to him. Like, yeah, whatever, Trav. And then like, he was like, Key, look. And like, he was showing me and I was watching them do it. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, they are in his ear. Oh, he is looking around. Holy shit, he does have something in his hand. Oh shit, he is looking for. Him. It was like that. It was like, yo, and, he and, then, he, and then he and then his buddy had the gun in his. Yeah, that was yeah. that was that wild, was a wild night. <laughs> wild night. <laughs> like I just remember running. and Somebody had asthma, and then we had to take a break. You know? What oh I'm yeah, saying? somebody's <laughs> falling out. Yeah, yeah like, dude. What the it hell was it? It was a lot going on then. Random ass people with us. It was just like who is? <laughs> it was, it was a like lot. a fever dream. It was like Judgment Night. It was crazy. It felt like Judgment Night Southwest South by Southwest edition. Yeah, that's what it was, man. Yeah. It was getting chased around. Yeah, that. yeah food carts. It was insane. I mean, so whatever happened start... to? Go ahead. Whatever happened to that dude? Like what happened? I don't remember. I just remember it stopping. Like, uh, well, he chased we getting... us for. They they were after us for a while, but they ended up giving up because we had legs. That's what it was. I just remember it stopping. And I was like, okay, we're good. I just I remember you know. walking as fast as one could walk without running. And I was still like skeptical, like, you know, because I don't believe in anything. And it was like, this shit ain't happening. No one's walking. And at one point, you turn around and saw him. Uh, I don't know. I still don't remember it like that. Like, you know, like, yeah, I dude. just, I, I, you know, because like there was a, a series of events that led up to that, not that night. However, right. but there was some situations where it was just like, I don't know, like, be going on to just travis sometimes and then like yeah, he was like yo that's my chicago intuition kicking in and shit and like i, I remember there was something in chicago and you're like okay yeah you was dead ass right but like i don't know i just wasn't convinced that night but shit yo i saw it yeah i saw it dude like for real i wasn't it i wasn't either i thought oh man he's been drinking he's just wild and because you know travel get a little suspicious when he get a little booze a little bit suspicious gets really friendly but suspicious <laughs> and like yo so i'm thinking okay he wasn't drunk or anything but i'm thinking yo all right you know he's, he's probably seeing and then I saw it and I was like, wait. And I really watched him. I was like, holy shit, this dude's crazy. He's for real looking for it. Like, it was real. Like, and it that's escalated when I put it you know, quickly. Cause I remember like Travis, I was like, yo, this dude's like really, like, really, like, you know, friendly. You know what I'm saying? Like, da 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 da. Like, he came to watch the show with not. And then, like, yo, this dude's Flipped. been follow- following me all night. And I'm like, sure, he's following you. Or is he just like really into like the shit you're kicking? You know what I'm saying? Like, and then next thing you know, we're like, you know, like <laughs> power walking to the street. Out the back. We went out the back door. <laughs> yo. But I do remember Travi, we were in Amsterdam, one of the times we were in Amsterdam, and Travi briskly walking past us as we're in the red red district going, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And then <laughs> just like this prostitute and some pimp yelling fuck off cuss words that don't match till at, at Travi. And I'm like, and we're just trying to trot behind him, like, what happened? He's like, just run, man. I was taking pictures. You're not supposed to take pictures. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and next thing you know, we have a pimp and a hooker screaming at us, fuck you, bitch, mother. <laughs> Mother the beach, because they're like, man, foreign, yo. And they was like, chasing this. And Travis literally running with the same smile he has on his face now, just going. And we're like laughing, hauling ass. These people mean business, because, you know, trafficking and whatnot. I remember Delano was like, dude, you're not supposed to film him. I was like, it's too late now, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yo. And we got chased in the red light district in Germany, in Frankfurt. 
by them skinheads. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah, no, no. That, the, the axis of evil, which is uh, Frankfurt, Germany, not too far from this hotel we were staying at, which was near TGIF, <clears throat> which was weird. Um, was that where we had, we had a TGIF or like or was it a place no. that <laughs> TGIF? I don't no, remember. It, it was no, something. No. It was something very USA accessible, right? If it wasn't like a Dr Pepper themed restaurant, it was like a Fridays it was or, fucking, or not Bennigan's, but like some, or Chili's. Like it was some shit that we got here back home, so we ate that shit. Mm-hmm. Base cake started kicking in, you know, from Amsterdam because like, yo, we got to eat some of this. Because we can't bring it back. This is before I became a smuggler. And then they um <laughs> and then yo, it was just like it started with the with the that we walked by that one brothel and uh mm-hmm. not to go in, we was walking past, and mm-hmm. the people thought I was T Pay. Yeah, that they was did. interesting. And they they, and she, I had dreads at the time. So they, they bring me in and then they like they wouldn't let me leave. They're like, yo, like, you know, look look at these girls. I'm like, nah, nah, I'm not here for that. I had to like yell that I'm a cop. In order for them to like leave me the fuck alone, and but, then but the ill part was I can't remember who it was that was with us, but they pointed out, look over and and like they had this hallway kind of like in front and to the side, and there was some very swarthy looking gentleman with those uh leather jackets on. It looked like <laughs> it looked like he looked fake, really, and they was plotting. <laughs> they was like back there waiting. I was like, yo, they trying to set us up, and so we had to get the fuck out of there. Oh was yeah, no, nah, we was out of five thousand. Then like we was with our dude Nero, who's like you know like a Sikh type, you know Muslim, right? If I'm, I'm no, he's not Muslim. He's a he's a he's a oh man, uh, Hindu, Hindu. Okay, Hindu. so he's a Hindu, mm-hmm. and like he saw some cultures all wrong again. Hey man, we, like hey, there was no uh, there was no like legend key to look at, you know what I'm saying, to tell who was who, you know, in that scenario. <laughs> and then once again, space cakes is caking, right? So we're walking down the street, and then we like. You know, the Nero was panicking because he saw like some skinheads coming down the street, like towards us. But maybe they was just like two gay dudes with cancer because, you know, like the energy <laughs> wasn't really, you know, that, you know, what's, you know, what's, once we cross paths. And then the models doing heroin in the street, dude, making noises, man, made the noise like on TV, dude. She puts the needle in her arm, and goes, ah. I'm like, yo, <laughs> dog. Like, yo, what is the game? Yeah, and the space kicks are kicking in. I'm looking around, and we see that uh, Indian pimp dressed like Colonel Sanders. Yes. With them. It was, yeah, it was it was nuts. Uh-oh, battery running low. But yeah. It yeah, was, uh, it, it was like, it, it reminded me of that should have been the movie Dr. Detroit. And then also, yeah. like, and then it was like the kids wow. that was circled in the neighborhood on the bikes, and, shit, and I just felt like they was going to steal my camera. And uh, we ended up, like, hiding out, like, in the yeah, lobby of a building for a second. That. And uh, and then, then going back to the hotel. And I think we went back to the hotel. Wait, Travi wasn't even with us. No, I was with Brock in that room. And Travi was home. He was back in a hotel sleep. And we took very That's provocative right. photos standing over Travi. You know, That's like, right. You know, like for blackmail, just in case one day we got to use it. You know? Yo. <laughs> That's I bet those what? pictures are gone now. Nah, I still got them. Nah, they got <laughs> I'll see I'll see ghosts of them and things sometimes. Like, oh, I'm, I'm on my old laptop. Man, I'm like a hoarder Shoot. for like everything. Like I have letters. We got we school. actually got when we were being chased. I think we got some of that. We got some of that on now, film, like, I do when I do have like the video of like the recap, like right after it happened. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, okay. just so, like, it's okay. like I wanted an audio re- a video record of this just in case like I forget later. And boom. Like every now and then I watch it just to remember the good times. God dang red, uh, red like little red areas, red light districts, boy, man. Especially over there in Europe, man. You go to them, uh, them east, them eastern kind of countries, like you, you know, what I'm saying when you get into the whole Germany, the Yugoslavia, and that, the, man, they mean business out there, boy. They oh, it's truly God's blind spot, man. They like, yo, you're gonna take this? Pussy. No, I don't want a prostitute. Take it. You're like, no, I don't want it. I don't want it. You, know, you have to run from them. It's crazy. It's like, yeah, I don't want to be banging no prostitutes. One of the best quotes, though, I remember when we were in Amsterdam. And you were like, yo, how much is it to get one of these prostitutes? Not because you was asking like to get one. You were just like, what is this? Mm-hmm. How much? And the person was like, $50. And you go, a lot of people have $50, bro. And, but yo, just the way you said it. And, I, and, I've been, and I've been running with that for the rest of my life. Yo, man, too many people got $50, man. Like, yo, it's gross. Fucking gross. <laughs> From all over the world. They just go in. And yeah. just sticking it in one the same sock you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> like everybody so you get everybody's fluids yeah uh, like geez. i wouldn't stick my hand in a plastic glove that someone else just used 
Yeah, dude. Yeah, there's a lot of that going on. But yeah, yeah. Man, it was a very interesting time over there overseas. Hopefully, we'll get to go back again if the world doesn't fall apart in World War Three. We're not you having know. orange afros here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> like, just imagine, like we, like everyone on the planet has powers, right? Like, like, like if you survive, whatever happens, right? Like you, you all got powers, and now it's like truly like in the days of Olympus. <laughs> <laughs> Is that better? Is it better? Like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody has powers. Can you rebuild? Like, you can use, you know, your mind powers to reconstruct things because everything's going to be melted. You know what I'm saying? I just I'm wondering. see a bunch of epic sky fights and, <laughs> and motherfuckers going for it on land, sea, and air. Like, oh. Or is it just the radiation that's causing you to see all this? Hey, you know bring them to me, Neptune. <laughs> <laughs> and you're talking to a brick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just oh. well, <laughs> Looking like man. the Toxic Avenger. <laughs> Yo, be sure, man, you subscribe to the Bodega Brothers podcast, man, wherever you streaming your podcast from. Don't forget, Trav, yeah. I got his single monkey shit that came shit, out shit, this shit, week. Shit, shit, Been seeing you on the blogs and stuff. He's getting that, using that white privilege to get that coverage. Yeah, he is. Good job, Travis. And you also got that joint violence. Oh, right yo, now. man, violence is out right now. Just got accepted to a film festival in L.A. And uh, hopefully we bring home the trophy going down yeah. November 19th. If you Word. happen to hear this before then, pull up on the kid, man. Details on the Bodega Brothers IG page as well as my Instagram page as well. And uh, Keto, what you got cooking up? Yeah, I got a whole project I'm trying to get together, man. Going back and uh, drop this thing called Type Joints. It's going to be a project. I'm trying to decide what the lead single is going to be off of yet. I'll know this week for sure, for sure, so I can get visuals and everything out within the next three weeks. So it'll be, uh, it should be pretty ill trying to decide. But, you know, I got a beat in my head I can't get no one to make. And I got a perfectly good machine studio right here. But I get pissed very easy. So totally I'm trying understand. to learn how to make beats and I get very angry. So anybody every got them beats? Every time yeah. I try to learn how to make a beat, like, you know, if I'm not just looping a loop, like, you know, just on some just like. I'm getting that, put this here. Ah, why yeah, is it like, this? Yeah. 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 I, and, and I have a great recommendation to who should make that beat. I'll tell you once we get off. This. Okay, we'll get with it. Yeah, because I, I need that. So if, if uh, you seeing this or hearing this and, you know, keynote, get at me with your beats, man, because I'm doing some things. And shout out to uh, them Dallas Cowboys going to be smoking on that Rams pack today. Smoking cool. on that Rams pack. Let's date the f*** out of this episode. God dang it, Trav, you did it I again. I didn't say a year. It don't matter, Trav. We play them all the time. We're not dating it. We play them all the time. But, but what if this comes this out in June? could be 1994 and we're still smoking on the Rams pack. Doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. I, Point we don't just play them once a lifetime, so this could be in the future. You know you got to be dedicated to Team, if you wake up and put their shit on, like the day put it on. Day. I got another man's name on my back. On your back, like you're part of the team, boy. Like you've been to practice. Look at that lamb. Is that lamb, lamb of God? Uh huh. Succulent lamb. What position yeah. does lamb play? I'm not. He plays wide receiver. That's his the guy name, who runs with the ball. I'm glad you said it before. Sidarius Lamb. He sounds like he would be in Game of Thrones. <laughs> he does. Like he goes by CD. But like, like see, you, see, you know what he does sound like when you say when you say his name, it sounds like that Key and Peel episode when they're like doing the football. Yeah, like when word. He's like Sidarius, Laquarius, Laquavius, Lamb. Gotta he have them cues in there, boy. He had to kill a man with a sword in order to get his position on the team. And not a sword, a sword, a sword. <laughs> he he then he then poked that sword into that man's eye socket, and ate the ball like an olive. <laughs> we want him on our team bring him he wanted Worry. to build the vikings but the cowboys would just have to do <laughs> <laughs> type <laughs> word man well, at least we got this done because you know it was real 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 troubly and real shitty at first man so uh maybe oh, yeah. next week maybe next week we'll get it right because yeah this troubleshooting episode like a mug Yo, uh, truly a labor of love, but we do it because we love each other. And we love y'all, man. So uh, shout out to the Bodega crew. Uh, yeah. we, we don't really have a name for our fandom. We definitely will take some suggestions in the comments yeah. if you make yeah, it to yeah. the end of this episode. Uh, you know, uh, I was thinking Bodegans, but... Uh, Bodegans? Yeah, but uh, I don't know. The sounds... Bodegians? Bodegians. That's like what I almost automatically type every time I type Bodega Brothers on something like <laughs> My brain be course correcting it, but uh, the Bodegians help us figure it out because the Bodega Hive is already taken. Yep, just uh, what they what they always say on these goddamn videos: make sure you like and subscribe, and they do us <laughs> a big favor. Swarm. Yeah, the swarm. Oh, that <laughs> sounds like some woo stuff. Never mind. Yeah. Word. 
Bodega, Bodega Tang. Well, yo, man, much love, fellas. And we'll catch y'all on the next lap. I'm about to be invaded by adult humans. I see. I see. I <laughs>